Hey there, Sharon Horn Nelson here. Welcome to day 1347 of What You Up To Now. Not gonna lie, I like this little halo effect that I found in the Facebook filters. I don't know if you can see this, you might be hearing me on the podcast, but there's like this little light up, raindroppy little diamondy halo that's around my head. I think it's hilarious. I really, really like it. And it reminds me of that all the things that we do in our life aren't gonna matter once we croak, once we die, once we're done. We're, once we're done, we're done. So all the things we're stressing over, <coughs> like coughing all week long, are, and I'm not stressing over coughing, I just, I don't like coughing in my videos, uh, are, are not going to matter. They're certainly not going to matter in a couple of days. They're probably not going to matter in a week, and they're maybe not going to matter in a year or, a, or two from now. So I, I struggle with that sometimes. Sometimes we think we're so mired in the emotions and the drama and the drama of what's going on right now in the moment that we forget that this too shall pass. So what's going on in Sharon's world and in uh, the online world as I transition from the offline to the online world and a little bit of back and forth. Uh, Sharon Hornell from here in case we haven't met. Just uh, I do a little discussion every day about and I cover what I'm working on, what's working, what's not working as I make that transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world. I started out in business when I was 13, so that's 48 years ago, you can do the math, and uh, have been involved in at least 27 different industries and businesses as an owner and operator, a primary, over the last 48 years. In addition to that, over a quarter century at that time, I spent simultaneously working in corporate America. Actually, for some of the coolest companies on the planet, Today, I'm not sure how cool they still are since it's been a while since I worked for them. But when I worked for them, I thought they were the coolest companies on the planet. Both um, some big names, you know, Fortune 10, I believe, Fortune 25 companies, as well as some really, really big family owned companies. Um, and of course, there's differences in that. But one thing I've learned, if, if not much else, is that. Much of what we do, much of what we learn, much of who we are, much of who we become, the skills that we have are absolutely positively transferable from one role to the next, from one experience to the next, from one job to the next, from one industry to the next. And I don't know, it seems like in corporate America at least, and in different professions, others, usually those that have hit the big time, lead us to believe that we need to stay within our lane. We need to only focus on certain things in order to be successful. But I think what we're there forgetting is that each and every one of us individually gets to define what success looks like for us. I remember early in my corporate career, I was working for Procter & Gamble. As a matter of fact, my first job out of college was making toilet paper for Procter & Gamble. I remember sitting down with my vice president at the time, and he was in charge of the manufacturing end of the business operations, and him telling me outright that what I wanted to do was impossible, actually impossible at Procter & Gamble, but not impossible in my life, because I always wanted to understand manufacturing and operations and engineering, but I also wanted to understand marketing and sales and the other sides of the business so I could have my own company, my own corporation someday. I wanted to have my own manufacturing company someday. And basically he said, nope, when it came time for me to move out of my first starting job there to a different job. I wanted to go the marketing route. And he said, nope, there is no crossing over. Once you start out in operations, engineering, or the marketing and account management, account rep type of the business, that's it. You, you follow that track for your entire career. There is no crossing over until, of course, you hit the vice president or above level. And <coughs> so I learned early on in my career that I was going to have to switch companies. I was going to have to move and work for different companies throughout my career if I wanted to get the skills and the experience that I wanted to run my own businesses someday. So that's exactly what I did. And, and I'll share more about that, I'm sure, as we talk more throughout this little diary or journaling of what's working for me and what's not. Now, I currently have, and why do I do this? People have asked me, why the heck do you do this? Why do you journal and share what you're working on every day? And I do it because I am currently and permanently, currently and permanently, visually challenged. I've had challenges with my eyes since my early 20s. I think it was probably 21, 2021 when I first got 
uh, started having inflammation and problems with my left eye. Lost vision in my left eye before I was, before I had my son, till about, about 25, 26, I lost vision in my left eye and then it was gone. I got a little bit of vision in it after I had cataract surgery in, I was pregnant with my son actually, so I was, I was 30, oh my gosh. And I got some, some colors and, and I can see a little bit of colors and things, but not a functional eye. But it was still better than no vision at all. At least light and things can come in. Then after following my son cardiac arrest in 2011, my right eye started to take the same journey. And <coughs> although I should have done more to prepare because I had been told for a long time that this was going to happen and, and was, ex well, was probably going to happen and could happen. But I, uh, I like so many, took the optimistic approach and said, nah, it's never going to happen. My, my right eye will stay fine and everything will be wonderful. Well, a couple of years ago, things started to really take a turn for the worse. In 2011, I got cataract surgery on my right eye because they wanted to be able to see behind my lens what was going on because they think that's part of what happened with my left eye is there was a lot of inflammation and infection going on there that they didn't know about. And so my eye actually destroyed itself and the doctors couldn't see what was going on because there was such a thick cataract form. A lot of it from the treatments of steroids and things that were shot into my eyes. So 2011 bought me a couple of years, bought me a few more years of being able to drive and get around and things, but now not so much. So I have to do things to compensate for that, right? I'm not, I'm not stopping just because I don't have 20-20 vision. I am going to figure it out. And so part of my journey, my personal journey is figuring it out, right? And then sharing what I figure out with other people so that they don't have to struggle with certain things that I, I don't like the word struggle because I think struggling is optional. Just like I think suffering is optional. I choose not to suffer or struggle. Does it mean I don't have a hard time with things sometimes? No, I absolutely positively do. I just don't want to label it struggle or suffering because then it feels worse for me. And I always want things to feel better. So today in Supersize Your Business, we talked about the big time. Our idiom today was the big time. It's been around since the early 1900s, the 18th century, or the 19th century. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so well over 100 years and anything that's been around for even decades is really, really popular with the internet these days. So anything that's been around for 100 years or more has probably impacted you, me, and a whole lot of other people. So the big time, that expression has impacted a lot of us. Now, a lot of people are under the false impression that when you hit the big time, when you get success in a certain arena, area, or aspect, you don't have any problems. And that's absolutely not the truth. It's just the opposite, actually. The bigger we become, the bigger our problems become, but we grow with them so we have the ability to handle bigger problems. And I shared 10 things to expect to happen as you're getting the big time success. And I would never call myself big time, but I have had tastes of success and I've experienced all 10 things on that list. And they're things that we don't necessarily think about. So I wanted to pre-warn people that are working on supersizing their business that as you go through and are are getting more and more success, you might as well expect these things to happen because the probability is they're going to happen to you. They happen to every successful person I've known <coughs> and to me in any area that I've had success. Uh, so that was Supersize Your Business today. Our Get Up and Go Challenge today was about our core values and what's really, really important to us. And I cheat a little bit when I do core value process and I let everybody pick a core value for each area and aspect of their life. So physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, relationships, contribution, and I added communication and confidence this year in April. And so we pick a core value for each one of those, and then we look for the overarching theme, and we say, okay, what is my, my driving core value? I always like to know what my driving core value is. And mine, I've done this exercise nine times now, it, it always comes down to love. It's loving myself and loving other people. If I'm loving myself and loving other people, I will always make the right choice for me, right? So that was our exercise for get up and go challenge. Our, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> still got a cough. It lasts like two weeks, right guys? A cold lasts two weeks, so we just deal with it. One thing every day that centers us, our annual challenge was about continual cheerfulness. And I love this philosophy and I try to live by it. Not always work, I'm not gonna lie. There are days when I, I feel grumpy 
I don't feel awesome when I wake up and have a cough. It annoys me because it slows me down. So, with continual cheerfulness, what does that mean to you and how, how would that impact your life? If you looked at all your experiences to the best of your ability, and they're not going to all feel cheerful, right? But if you look for the upside, look for the bright side, look for the cheerful as often as you can, how will that change the value of your life? How will that change the outcomes in every area and aspect of your life? I will admit that over the last decade, probably 11 years now, I have actively chosen to look at the bright side, look at the positive things. And that has made a huge difference in my life. Even when I have huge challenges and setbacks, I'm still looking for the upside of that. I'm not looking for the whining and the complaining and the bitching and the moaning, although sometimes I feel like doing those things. I'm looking for what am I going to do about this? What can I do about this? What else is possible? How can I flip this around and make this an advantage for me instead of other people? Most people would see it as a disadvantage. How can I make that an advantage for me? And how can I use it to continue to make progress and move my life in the direction I want to go? So those are the three big pieces of, you know, one, two, three big pieces of content and things I'm working on right now. Other projects, when I'm doing a challenge, I focus on the challenge and the people that I'm already serving. Uh, and so that's what we're doing in the month of October, which is great because I can be super flexible when things like colds pop up. And I don't know about you, but about twice a year, every year, for most of my life, I've had a cold. You get one in the spring, you get one in the fall. When you live where there's four seasons, things change, molds and mites, and maybe it's allergies, but I like to say it's not allergies because then it only lasts two weeks. All right, if I can help you in any way, please ask in the comments below. Again, I actually really, really like this filter. If you if you haven't seen it, go on Facebook and look for the new. They just did a bunch of changes. And uh, look for the little angel filter. I get a kick out of it because how often do I get to be an angel? Not very. I was a bunny for an earlier video, so that was probably inappropriate. All right, have a great day. If you have any questions, ask about offline businesses or online. I might not have the exact answer for you, but I guarantee we can get you going and moving to the next step and doing the next step, not feeling stuck or frozen. So that was one of my biggest frustrations, not having somebody to ask. All right, have a great day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.